we have to count the number of scales in the lateral line and count the number of spines. Describing a newly discovered species of ocean fish is a joy for California Academy of Sciences researcher Luis Rocha. But describing the coral reefs that many call home is increasingly frightening. Rocha just returned from an expedition to Australia and the Great Barrier Reef, a habitat now caught in a global event called coral bleaching. Coral bleaching happens when temperatures, water temperatures go up and corals get very stressed and they expel the algae that lives within their tissues. The result is the bone-colored bleaching that indicates the coral could soon die off if conditions don't change. This is now the fourth and possibly worst global bleaching on record, matched by historic ocean warming. And during the dive, Rocha and his team made another unsettling discovery scientists hadn't expected. Examining the coral at lower depths, where the water is typically cooler, they found the same warming trend and the same pattern of damage from rising water temperatures. In the deeper reefs, it was supposed to be 76 to 78. It was 80 to 82. So it was causing the deep corals to bleach. So even though the deeper water was colder than the shallow water, it was still warmer than normal and causing the deeper corals to bleach. And the damage is widespread. Recently, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration estimated that more than half the world's coral reefs are now experiencing heat stress severe enough to cause bleaching. And those same rising ocean temperatures are affecting ecosystems well beyond the coral reefs, including the west coast of North America and our own Bay Area shoreline. Teams from the Academy have been documenting the loss of a predator known as the sunflower sea star that's unleashed an environmental chain reaction damaging vital kelp forests that provide habitat to other native species. Researcher Rebecca Johnson studies the fallout and believes it's a collective result of our changing climate. The bleaching, the loss of the sunflower stars on our coast, the changes that we've seen here at this reef, I mean, these are all kind of like symptoms of global change. The Academy already has two cutting-edge programs geared to the future, breeding the sea stars in captivity to preserve their genetic diversity, while at the same time spawning coral that could someday be transplanted to help regenerate damaged reefs. You can kind of see that there's different types of coral. There's Luis Rocha coral. believes coral reintroduction may ultimately be necessary to keep the reefs healthy, pointing out that ecosystems they provide are a lifeline to roughly a third of the ocean's creatures. So if the corals die, those species associated with them die. So it's not just the corals that are going to go. There's a lot of species that depend on coral. Still, he is hopeful enough of the world's reefs will survive and flourish to form a kind of coral bridge to the future, giving researchers time to develop strategies to help the stressed reefs regenerate, all as the world works to combat the causes of climate change. In San Francisco, Spencer Christian, ABC7 News.